This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get free access to Nebula, our new streaming service, when you sign up using the link below. For as long as humans have had the capacity for complex thought, we've asked big questions. Why are we here? Do we have free will? What came before the Big Bang? These are all interesting questions and have been debated for decades, or even centuries in some cases. But thanks to our 21st century advancements in computing and technology, we've been able to add an even more interesting question to the bunch. Do we live in a simulation? At first glance, this might seem like a silly thought, but there's actually plenty of reason to assume that we may well be sims in some advanced civilization science experiment. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at what the simulation argument entails, and explore how we might tell whether or not our existence is simulated. If you look at how our technology has progressed over the last 50 years or so, it's pretty shocking to see just how far we've come. 47 years ago, the world got its first taste of widely available video games with Pong. Cutting edge at the time, Pong consisted of two rectangles and a dot, which players could bounce from side to side. Fast forward to today, and we're getting close to photorealistic video games and seeing the rapid maturation of virtual and augmented reality devices. This explosion of technology has led some thinkers to believe that, at some point in the future, our descendants will have developed the capacity to run incredibly complex ancestor simulations, and that we may be living in one such program. If it is possible to run such a massively intricate simulation, then the odds of us being real biological entities are greatly diminished. Think of it like this. If these supercomputers do come to exist, then it would make sense to assume that there would be many such simulations running at various points in the future. As technology advances, say, a thousand years from now, it's increasingly likely that more powerful supercomputers could run hundreds or thousands or even millions of ancestor simulations simultaneously. If we accept this line of reasoning, then it would be foolish to assume that out of all the millions of simulated realities, we happen to live in the original biological one that hasn't yet developed the simulation technology. This is pretty strange to think about, but how exactly could we determine whether or not our reality is real? This is where things get tricky, because if we are in a simulation, then we'd have no real way of knowing it because our entire universe is based on the rules coded into the program, which means any evidence we find would be simulated and consistent with those rules. We may even be programmed in such a way that allows our conscious minds to reach the conclusion that we might be sims. But let's say it is possible to determine the nature of our reality. What clues might we be able to find? One hint could be the rigid mathematical laws that seem to rule existence. No matter where we look, the same equations pop up time and again. The speed of light, Planck's constant, pi, the force of gravity. Everything conforms to these structural rules. Now, we might take this as proof that we live in a computer simulation, because any such program would have to be built on code that determines how the program functions. But it could also just be how the universe works. Or perhaps the speed of light is the speed limit for data transmission within our simulation. Is the mathematical rigidity of our universe the natural outcome from billions of years of chaos and randomness, or is it parameters set by a watchful simulator? Another clue that our world may not be what it seems is a phenomenon known as the Mandela Effect. To many people, this is the surest sign that there's something going on that we don't understand. If you asked a handful of people over the age of 50 when Nelson Mandela died, a large percentage of them would say the 1980s. This is bizarre, because Mandela didn't die until 2013 but many people swear they remember news coverage of his death from the 1980s. This isn't the only example of diverging history. For those of us who grew up with this book series, what do you remember it being called? For many, myself included, the answer is the Berenstain Bears. The thing is, the real title is the Berenstain Bears. This type of revelation can be incredibly jarring, and it certainly was for me, because I loved those books as a kid and they helped me learn to read. And I'm certain the title was Berenstain Bears. Some people take these weird instances of collective memory failure to be evidence of diverging timelines, or a glitch in the simulation. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of these events, and some of them are very difficult to explain away. Then there are the strange occurrences at the subatomic scale. Just like if you look too closely at a computer screen and all you see is fuzzy pixels, things we observe become unclear at a certain magnification. Most people think we simply don't have the technology to delve deeper yet. But some proponents of the simulation hypothesis believe that we've reached the end of what the program will allow us to see. Why waste processing power on increasingly tiny things? Another micro-scale clue is hidden within particles known as quarks. One scientist claims he discovered actual computer code hidden within the equations of string theory. He says he found error-correcting codes. They're what make web browsers work. So why were they in the equation I was studying about quarks and electrons and supersymmetry? 
While this may seem to indicate our universe is indeed simulated, remember that the macro scale is governed by mathematical laws as well. But since quarks are so tiny, it seems more suspicious when we find mathematical code at that scale. At the end of the day, it's likely that we could never determine for certain whether we're living in a simulation. All we really have to go on is the odds. If we accept that our technology will eventually become powerful enough to run complex ancestor simulations, it is vastly more likely that we are living in one such simulation. In a way, that's kind of comforting, in the sense that nothing really matters. But on the other hand, that fact could cause some serious existential crises. If you're still not sure our technology will ever reach the level of ancestor simulations, check out Waiting for Immortality on CuriosityStream. It's a fascinating documentary that details our rapidly advancing technology, including mind uploading and digital brain simulation. If you watch my show, you'll know that I'm a big fan of CuriosityStream. It's an online streaming service with thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. I've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to build my new car show, Grand Test Auto, that I host with Joseph from Real Life Lore. Grand Test Auto is available right now on Nebula, a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Polyphonic, Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, and of course, Second Thought and Real Life Lore among others. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Second Thought fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash secondthought. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles like Waiting for Immortality, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto, as well as other great Nebula originals like Working Titles, a series dedicated to breaking down popular TV show intros. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not just me, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up at the link below. I promise you'll love it.